Enrico Rosa da Silva, one of the top jockeys this country has ever seen, joins us to talk about his incredible journey. Joe Tilly Sports, come on up! Welcome to the program. Let me tell you about our special guest on today's show. He raced for five years in his native Brazil before follow, that was followed by four years in Macau. He moved to Canada in 2004, where he would dominate 2,226 victories in his 18 year riding career, over 102 million in purses. He won the Woodbine Riders title six times, including five in a row. He won the Sovereign Award as Canada's top jockey six times. He's a two-time winner of the Queen's Plate. He won the Breeders' Stakes. He won the Canadian International and the Rico Woodbine Mile. Ladies and gentlemen, Eureka Rosa da Silva. Now, Eureka has come up with a new book just written by Eureka and Bruce McDougall entitled Riding for Freedom, just released. Bruce is an established writer, a Toronto lawyer. He's also a Harvard graduate. Bruce also wrote The Last Game, great hockey book, and the Ted Rogers story, among others. Bruce, Eureka, welcome to the program. Great to have you here. Joe. Thank you very much. So now Thank, you... You. Thank you for having me. It's, it's a privilege to be here today. Well, it's an honor for us to have you, Eureka. Uh, it, the book is phenomenal. It, it, it's, uh, it's so real. It's so raw. It's so down to earth and, and, and honest. I just, uh, I found it very compelling and found myself welling up a few times there's a lot of stuff uh, that i could relate to on, on some levels and i'll we'll get to that in just a bit but uh you know in in, in the book Eureka, you talk about uh growing up in, in in poverty in brazil uh give us an idea what that was like um it was a difficult time that time you know my family was very poor um uh you know, we, we keep moving one place to another place. And, uh, and, and, and the worst thing is uh, my relationship with my father very early was, uh, was uh, not the best, you know, as I remember. Like, I, I, I can't remember my father giving me a hug. But I respect that. That time was uh, a little bit different and uh, maybe the culture, right? Um, uh, and... Uh, you know, and uh, grew up seeing what he used to do uh, was was very tough, was very hurtful. And then plus I have the religion, you know, they, uh, the re religion very early in life, I, I didn't feel good about the uh, being going to the church and I never did. I don't know why. And, uh, and I need to fought very hard uh, when I was eight years old to get out from the re religion, but also left a lot of um, you leave the religion, but the religion doesn't leave you. Same with my father. You know, I when I was 12 years old, I walk away from the house, uh, from my grandmother's house. But I used to see him all the time, and I said, you know what? I just I have to walk away from this life. And I've been very lucky because you know I very young in my life, I have one thing that uh, was on my side was horses, you know. Uh, horse did a miracle in my life. Um, I remember very young, uh, great moments that I have was with horses. And horse, when they look at you, they look with a lot of compassion. You know, they send you love, compassion. I think every animal is like that in some ways. But I have more connection with horses and, uh, and they bring the best of me. And I need that time. <laughs> that time I need, I need their help. And... I'm very grateful for the horses. Bruce, so what uh, compelled you to, to want to write this book about Eureka? Uh, good. I was a little bit reluctant, actually, when I first uh, heard about Eureka's plan, um, partly because I was afraid this would be a sports book um, exclusively. 
but we organized our first Zoom call through a mutual friend. And as soon as I started to talk to Eureka and heard what he wanted to do and looked into his eyes, uh, I knew that I could work with this guy. Yeah, there's something there, isn't there? There's something very deep in, in, in Eureka's eyes, right? Well, he's just such an honest guy, and I knew that anything he told me would be the truth. So when we talked a little further, um, we saw that we shared some similarities in our backgrounds and um, some of the obstacles that we'd overcome. And I knew from my own experience, which is nothing nearly as intense as Eureka, that uh, I knew I knew how much uh, effort, I guess, and determination and perseverance and courage it takes to get through this stuff. And uh, and then I, and then we just started to talk, and Eureka started to tell me a story, and each time we talked, <laughs> we'd spend a couple of hours together, and I'd be taking notes. And at the end of it, I'd say, God, this is amazing, Eureka. And he'd say, yeah, well, wait till you hear the next one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'd go back for the next one, and he'd tell me another amazing story. And I'd be going, Jesus, Eureka, this is unbelievable. And he'd say, yeah, well, wait till chapter three. <laughs> and, and it just got better and better and better. Uh, <laughs> But it's an incredible story, and I, I didn't have much trouble writing it because Eureka told it all to me in uh, pretty straightforward language. Um, but it, it's an amazing story. <laughs> well, Rico, you, you've had to overcome a lot, of, a, a lot of demons in your life, and you talk very openly and frankly about that in, in the book. And, and a lot of it has to do with your father and the, and the abuse, actually, from your, from your childhood in, in that regard. Can you sort of give us, paint us a little bit of picture of what it was like growing up as a young uh, Eureka in, in Brazil with your father? Uh, you know, like like just mentioned that, uh, you know, my, my strong memory is, uh, you know, w when I was uh, three years old, you know, and I start uh, realize that what he was doing uh, with my babysitter was not right, you know. Um, and you know, that, that image uh, play a lot in my mind uh, over the years. But I pushed down, I pushed down, and uh, I tried to tell everybody when I was young uh, that I have a perfect father, you know. Uh, it just, uh, it just even, even I, 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 before when I used to think what, what he did and what I witnessed, um, I feel so guilt about that. Uh, it's like it was my fault, and you know, uh, and I feel everything was my fault, and I carried that weight for a long, long time. And uh, the 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 good part was writing this book, and and I I think I feel very blessed that I have Bruce. Bruce uh, did a phenomenal job on the book. That I was able to, you know. Uh, all these feelings and this guilt and this shame about myself and I was able to open up and open up even more you know I was open up with my psychologist but now I open up to people this is the way I used to feel and uh, you know um, we have to be uh, stronger than any people that harmless uh, anybody you know especially I talk very open and we have to be women have to be stronger than rapers, you know. Uh, if you have any abuse, uh, some woman is listening right now, or girls, or boys, or who, who, who is, you know. Just be strong. Don't keep inside yourself. I kept for many years, and that really hurt me. You know, was like I was stunned my own self every single day. You know, we have to be strong. We have to encourage women got abuse. Uh, or, 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 or boys that got abused to come out and speak it up, you know. It's, there are a lot of people to help you. It's a lot of good psychology. It's a lot of good coach. It's no, uh, it's no, it's no way that uh, don't let that guilt and that shame hold you back. That is the, 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 
the message that I want to do uh, to send in the book for people to open up. And if you feel a lot of shame about yourself, like I did for many years, that's fine, but open up. I want to motivate people to open up and go for help. Now, as a young man, uh, the, the way you dealt with, with your struggles was you le left your grandmother's house and you got a chance to you got a chance to work with horses and of course that led to a riding career and it seems to me reading the book well obviously to me obvious to me reading the book you had a lot of surrogate fathers along the way who helped you tell us about some of those people um yes i i i did i was very blessed you know because i have these great people that the universe sent in my way uh like i have zeli medeiros he treat me like a son you know, and I felt that. And it's funny because when I was in his barn live for a year and a half, man, I don't have any, I didn't have, it's like almost, I have that peace inside myself. I was protected, you know. Uh, I have a lot of nice people around me, but if I didn't, uh, Zeli Medeiros will hunt them, you know. He will freaking protect me like like a son. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and you feel, and you know when you feel the people is in your back um uh, and uh, and he was in my back and uh and i left his barn you know he could easily say rico go on with your life no he was the one motivate me in the riding school um uh, riding school uh, and always look after me as any time that i need him he was there for me until today like we talk like you know father and son uh, I've been very grateful. And then I have a lot of friends, you know, um, friends that have helped me on my, on my life and being a mentor for me. It's like, uh, even, you know, him, Jim Bannon, you know, this guy being an amazing mentor for me, uh, taught me so many good things and so many others that, that I could mention. So your journey, tell us about a little bit your journey from, from, uh, Brazil and uh into getting into uh, riding and then uh eventually making your way to canada um i started racing in my town and i broke my arm i left i went uh, i went to train with zeli medeiros and then i went to sao paulo it was a very difficult for me because i have a bad asthma and i really need to hide that from everybody because if i use the spray close to another kit i'm dead you know uh my dream was over and i was very lucky i was successful and i was uh, i have my um i was a prince i was uh, i i won a lot of races and then after that when you become a professional you have no way to uh for your advantage and i started struggling and didn't talk too long and i uh, i started riding a horse it was a very good horse from post I talk about that horse. Uh, the horse bring me a lot of lightning in my career. And, uh, you know, always I have this dream that I want to leave Brazil. I, I feel a black hole inside myself, you know. And I said, you know what, I leave Brazil. Uh, this feeling is going away. I thought the same way when I left home when I was 12 years old. When I went to Zeli, Zeli Medeiro, like the hole was, you know, was way smaller. and. Uh, and I was really feeling good about myself, but then now I was on my own again, and and this hold was even bigger, man. The more I I get older, and I thought was because I I I said oh because I don't have a uh, that was in my mind. I'd look how crazy it is, uh, like I don't have a, a million dollar reais. The day that I have a million dollar reais in my hands, I will be comfortable. This this insecurity about myself is going to disappear and i start making a lot of money i start saving money and i make a million dollar reais and then my mind tricked me no it's not a million dollar reais it's a million dollar uh, us dollar i went there i make the freaking uh one million dollar and then guess what uh you know that insecurity is still there with me uh but going back Going back again, I was in Sao Paulo. I, I wrote Fans Post. I started being very successful. Then now I want to move to the United States and I start uh, applying for visa and I want to do the right way. You know, a lot of people come as an immigrant, um, 
just a tourist visa and then find out their paper. I was more stubborn. I tried to do the right thing. And guess what? The door was closed for me. I, I could not get the visa. And this opportunity came to ride in Macau. Guess what? Macau is, uh, you know, casino, gross, and everything, drugs, everything you can ever imagine, you know? There is the temptation for me, man, that really rot me up, you know? I make a lot of money in Macau riding, and, um, but it was, um, was not easy. But I, same, same way I need to look the positive way, I met my ex-wife, was a great, great, she's a great person. Um, who helped me along the way, you know, her family is really good, it's still my family and, and there, there was great, there was great. And one day I was, I was really thinking when I was in Macau, trying to um, go back to United States, I said, you know, I, I go back to my own dream to go ride in the United States and trying to move to New York. But then I came visit Canada uh, with uh, my ex, I visit her brother, her brother uh, lives here. And I went to the racetrack. When I saw the racetrack, my friend, I said, I already started dreaming I'm riding there. And um, I make a decision. I said, listen, I'm, I'm moving to Canada. And I came to Canada, same thing, you know, the hold is still inside myself. And I do a lot of work. I hire the best professional people to uh, physically, uh, like prepare me physically. But my problem was nothing to do with physics. I was very strong and 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 as a rider, uh, uh, very well prepared. My my always I prepared very strong physically. And uh, you know things start getting the same problems. You know same problems. Same the devil was there. You know um, for me to with a sex addiction, uh, insecurity, feeling bad about myself, and then where the lights come up. I said, you know what, I'm going for help. And um, I went for sports psychology first. Uh, and then I went, then finally I went to uh, a psychology that uh, uh, help, help people with addiction. And uh, this man took me from the dark home and to where I am now. You know, I'm so great. We work about seven, eight years together. And he still give me consulting sometime. Uh, for different things, uh, but uh, uh, was amazing. I was very lucky. I, 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 I feel very blessed that always I find the right people in the right moment. Yeah, we talked uh, before we came on about a little bit about about addiction, and I can relate to that as, as you know, somebody who's been sober a long time, but you know, struggled with uh, alcohol addiction for a long time. And, you know, how important it is to find people in your life who can help you and, and to be connected with people and go to the right people and open up about your situation and how sharing and, and talking to other people uh, can make, make such a difference for you. And, and you found the right people in your life that allowed you to do that. And, and of course, I have as well. And, and uh, you know, what a difference it makes in your life and, and, and allows you to be the best you can be. But you, you know, you've been helped by a lot of different people. Tell us about some of those. I mean, you tell, you've talked on it already, but tell us about some of the work that you had to do and how it changed you. Uh, I, um, you know, was hard to uh, even open up with my own psychology, right? Um, you know, you, you, you train to be strong in life, thinking that you hold all this secret, you're very strong and, you know, but end of the day, my friend, if you want a cure for yourself, you have to open up, you know? Um, I, um, I only start, uh, um, uh, overcome this when I start open up because, uh, there is a darkness. When you put the light on the darkness, my friends, all the shame and guilt disappear. And I can say this with my own experience. Okay. And it's very important. Psychology is very important. And then, you know, I divorced and I, I, I met Orla. My wife is such a big supporter, you know, uh, and I'm very open with my wife. You know, if we start um, having a little bit of uh, uh, tension on the relationship and I am honest to her, I said, listen, uh, I'm the guy that I need you. Uh, I need your support all the time. I can't go sleep with sleeping uh, in the same bed with tension because I know my own mind that is going to try to me uh, uh, sabotage me to go with clothes 
and it's not uh, because uh, I feel like is a is a uh, anyone is more beautiful than you. It's just the sabotage. And and if I have a little bit feeling, a little spark on my mind, and the first person I run to my wife and I tell her, and guess what? You know, uh, uh, she uh, <clears throat> she's there all the time. You know, and you have these kind of people behind you that make a lot of difference. And I have great friends, you know, I have great friends and, uh, and, uh, and you have the support and you feel strong every day. And, uh, and today I feel very strong about, and if I have any feelings inside myself and I will open up because that is the way for you to keep going forward and forward. Yeah, the, the, the shame and guilt and, and, and be, you know, involved with our addiction makes it difficult to open up. But once we start to open that, that you know, open those gates up and, and, and become real and, and share who we really are, to me, we, it, it's all about healing, you know, at a deep, deep level and becoming the kind of person that you were, that we were meant to be. And, and uh, uh, Bruce, I was going to let you to weigh in on this a little bit. Uh, you know, when you, when you heard uh, Eureka's story, when you talked about his story, you talked to you said you can relate tell us about some of that ability to relate uh i guess when when Eureka started to tell me about his early life in brazil uh it became very clear um because of some of the things that i'd gone through that his father in particular um, had an, an enormous influence on, um, on the way he behaved as an older person. Um, and we hadn't reached the point yet in our conversation um, when Rico had started to tell me about what he'd done to overcome some of those forces. And I remember leaving his house after the second conversation we'd had thinking that if only he could have seen what well, if only he could have seen the forces that were driving him to do what he did he would never have done it and in my own case um i i lost my dad when i was six seven and uh under very strange circumstances and the forces that informed my behavior for years afterward, um, it drove me in directions that I didn't want to go. As Eureka has already said, uh, and you've said too, you know, you, it's not pleasure that you find when you go in these directions, it's pain. And uh, I kept wondering why I kept doing these things. Why would I keep doing these things for years and years? And I kept thinking the same thing about Eureka as he was telling me his story. I kept wondering why. Why would you keep doing this? Why? Why do you keep doing this? And uh, and the realization, I guess, that, that I came to was that uh, it takes work, and none of us really knows why we do anything until we actually go inside ourselves, and as Rico says, open up and and acknowledge the demons that uh, work inside of us and that um, will continue to haunt us until we shine some light on them. And the only way to shine some light on them is to just keep on talking about it until the little tricks go away. <laughs> Sorry about that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Shine the light. Open up. Yeah. Tell somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so so you you were able to rico uh channel your you know your 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 focus your energy channel your energy in, into 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 racing you had a special relationship with horses you were tremendously successful and uh you know when, when you came to canada and, and you you know there, there there has been a change it started slowly you know for your career in canada but things got better and better and then i think that the breakthrough in terms of your racing career i think probably took place in 2009 if i'm not mistaken with uh, uh with a horse named eye of the leopard in, in the 2009 queen's plate that seemed to me like a 
a definitely a, a, a key turning point because that was the big race, the first big, the, the first major major race you, you really won here in Canada. Yeah, when when you uh, here in Canada, you know, when you talk about big race, you want to talk about the Queen's Plague, right? Uh, and you write about that, you know, like that was the the big big race. I won the international, I won uh, the mile, and uh, that came years and um, years later. Uh, but was the like the first major major race was the um, was the Queen's Plate, and then very lucky, um, I won uh, back to back uh, 2010 with Big Red Mike also. That first race, so 2009. Okay, you're with Eye of the Leopard. Uh, it's the 150th edition of the Queen's Plate, and uh, you know you're you're you got a bit of a long shot there. And you're sitting behind a pair of Hall of Fame jockeys in, in Mike Smith and, and Stuart Elliott, uh, but you were able to get the job done. Tell us what. Tell us about that race and what was it in that race that uh, that you, when was it in that race when you knew that you had a shot? Um, I knew the, the my horse all the way. He gave me a great feeling, um, but when we uh, uh, went to the second turn. Um, you know, and I, I knew I have a lot in the tank. I, 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 I knew that uh, my horse is going to run big. Uh, but when we turn home and um, he just don't accelerate, he just was one pace, one pace. And, and that make me really worry about because another horse start taking off and he just on the slow pace. And you know what? Uh, and we won in the pretty much in the last jump, you know. Uh, but yeah, he gave me a good, good feeling, the, a good chance. Like he gave me first a good feeling that uh, we're going to get there. And but when we turn home, he gave me a bad feeling that uh, you know this thing is not looking too good here. But anyway, that time you you have nothing much to think. You have to keep riding, riding, and every step the way I, I knew was closer and closer and closer and closer. And when we cross the wire, I have a, a good feeling that I won. But was not very, sh not sure, not hundred percent. And then beating those, uh, beating those big name jockeys is just fun for you as well, I'm sure. You know, the <laughs> guys who, you know, it, it's it's always nice when when guys are shipped into Woodbine, like you know, big name jockeys are shipped into Wood Woodbine, and the local guy comes through. That's always a good thing. Isn't it? Yeah, it, it's a it's a good thing. But you know, over the years, it's last like the last five years, uh, because I go to United States all the time too. And this almost uh, inside myself was didn't didn't uh, uh, like that in the beginning when I was riding, oh, we want to beat American. And then after is you is nice, but was not like like a crazy uh, for us. And of course, but still, uh, when you see a local rider, you, you feel happy for them, right? Like I, I was the guy that uh, if I was not riding and I watch a, a big race, I want the Woodbine job to win. You know, I cheers. I don't care if I like the guy or not. Uh, I, I always cheers for the local rider. Is there, a, is there a, like a, uh, you know, is there a lot of, is there some animosity? Some because you said you don't whether you like the jockey or not. Do you have you found yourself in situations where, where uh, you know some of the jockeys have been tough to get along with, or you've had some conflict? Yes, I have a. Uh, I, in the beginning, when I came to Canada, I have a conflict with a lot of people. But then after I start doing the mental work, and I realize, you know what, somebody's really bother you. It's nothing to do with them. It's to deal with you. And uh, the more work I did on myself, the more these people start disappearing. And I can say the last uh, four or five years, I got along pretty good with the jocks, you know. But that because I was busy in doing my stuff, I didn't have much, um, much, much time uh, inside the jocks room to. I talked to them, uh, but I was really busy because I was doing meditation, visualization, writing down my thoughts, you know. Uh, and and then and, and try to deal with them the best i could um i i have a ritual that i do every every single day the same thing you know a, a program that i designed for myself uh for me to follow the same thing and uh, 
uh, my uh, uh, relationship with another writer was pretty good in the end. And I believe that when uh, in the beginning, when when I, I came here, was the same thing in Macau and the same thing in Brazil. I could not get along with the people, but it's nothing to do with the people. It was my energy that was causing that problem. But when you start getting peace inside yourself, guess what? You're going to get peace. You are going to get peaceful people. Even the one is not very peaceful, they will see you, you bring the peace inside themselves, you know? Isn't that amazing? Hey, like we, 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 we change. And as a result of us changing, it seems that everybody else it changes around us. But like you said, it's really, it's really, us. <laughs> yes. right? it's, 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 it's yeah. it, it starts yeah. here. Our, 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 perce our perception changes and then all of a sudden everybody around us changes. I remember I had, had situ similar situation at work many years ago. And uh, when I, you know, I, as I started to change all of a sudden, you know, I work with some really amazing people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, it's great how that changes. So speaking of work, yeah, okay, so true. now 2000, and, sorry, go ahead. No, just one mention, one thing. It's like a met, meet blues, you know, like we have this conversation, the first thing, and then he shared about his father. Um, and, um, you know, it's just the same connection. Uh, like we, we have the same connection. You see when he writes in the book, it's like he was, Right, he took over my own mind and put in the words, you know, like uh, it's incredible how our connection, right, Blues, from the beginning. Uh, yep. Just right from the beginning, it was, I never thought myself, oh, I want, uh, I want to meet another, uh, somebody else uh, to see if I, um, uh, uh, maybe I want to do with somebody Better else. Match. When I met Blues yeah. and we talked, is, the connection was there. I said, Blues, I don't care who is the problem she is. <laughs> and uh, you know what? You're going to write my book. <laughs> yeah. But he said, no, Rick, it's not the way. Sometimes the publisher you want to uh, somebody else write a book. I said, no, 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 no. I want you to write my book and you're going to write my book. <laughs> yeah. you I'm know, sure you felt is, that connection too, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know? the, the amazing thing was that Joe, Eureka just kept telling me the story and all I had to do was listen. Yeah. Right. But, yeah, you know, I mean, years I mean, ago, it, it, probably we do not have the same connection. I asked my oh, psychologist, really? you know. Yeah. Because, <laughs> no, I no, asked I, my I, psychologist I, one, one day. I said, uh, because he was not taking clients, um, you know, and he's not looking to take much clients anymore. And then he said, then I start talking. I. I asked, I said, oh, no, no, please, let's meet once, and then you, we, uh, we talk, and then you make your decision. And I, then he met me, right? And, uh, <laughs> and years later, I, I, he said, okay, let's work, let's work a little bit and see what happened, okay, <laughs> uh, together. And then I asked him, I said, what do you see me uh, when uh, you first saw, uh, when you, what's your first impression? He said, oh, man. This little kid, this little guy is an angry, angry, angry guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I laugh, but just the way he said, right? because he's a tall man, and he said, "Well, when I look at you, oh my goodness, what an angry guy!" <laughs> right. Uh, it's yeah. you know the time you live in that anger is not very fun, believe me. But now we laugh about it, right. right. Well, and, and to look at you today and to see you today, it, it's hard to believe that the, the anger is there. I mean, you just, uh, you, you, you're so, it, it's so beautiful to be free of those demons and to be, to really to be your true self and, and, and to enjoy your life yeah. like, like you can today. So I want to talk a little bit more about the racing because we, it was uh, it, in 2009, you won with uh, Eye of the Leopard. Then in 2010, it was, uh, it was Big Red in Canada's biggest race once again. And, uh, this, of course, was, was was a very special race. Again, it's it's another situation where you've got a, a shot that, you know, it's a horse that had won the uh, play trial, I believe. So, you know, you, you, and a horse that, you know, had some potential for sure. But uh, when when did you know that this was going to be uh, your race once again? Uh, when we, um, uh, this was much more uh, a confidence race for me than it was with Eye of Leopard because I was able to take the lead and my horse was running very, very relaxed. When turned home, 
I said almost impossible for them to pass me, you know, because he was running relaxed, and when I moved, he moved, and and he was um, and he was a very strong horse and very very good horse. He gave me a great feeling when I turned home. It was completely different than uh, Big Red uh, 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 Eye of Leopard. Eye of the Leopard. Now, after the race course, this was a very special win because it also involved uh, uh, a special celebration, right? I know, meeting the queen, you know, uh, the preparation for this race, uh, you know, my preparation for the race, uh, physically, I have a great, uh, a great coach, uh, Master Sealy. Uh, he's a Taekwondo, he's a fifth Dan on Taekwondo, and, uh, but he also a, a great coach. Uh, we was working everything uh, on the physical part for me to be the, you know, the, be the best shape I could be on that, that day. Um, and also I was doing yoga. Uh, but also on the mental part was, uh, was a, a difficult to prepare because your mind wants to take you to the future, right? And uh, every time like, I, I give a little chance for my mind and, 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 and is already thinking about the queen. And uh, the last thing I want to, 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 uh, to let my mind focus is on that. You know, I have a job to do. I have to focus on the present moment and uh, I remember I was um, I, I was really struggling with that to stay in the present moment and don't let my mind thinking about the future. You know, I have is is here now. Is the preparation? Is is the walking nature? Is the meditation? And you know, and just block everything else. You know, the uh, the future is not in your control. What you have to control is being the present moment. And uh, and that was, one, I think, one of the most difficult race for me to be prepared mentally, as I remember. It's like you're talking like living one second at a time almost, like just living a completely in the moment. And, and uh, yeah, how, how helpful that was for you. Yeah, yeah it's Tell hard. me about uh, what uh, and, the, and, but, Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. No, no I, that I was will just give you uh, confidence finish your too, right? Yeah. Yeah, give you confidence because when I rode, I rode uh, in Japan against the best jockey in the world for the All Star Jockey. Um, you know that came to my mind. All I have to do is the same thing I did in the Queen's Plate. Just be in the present moment; thing will come to you. Also, another race is another race, big race. All you, and then you have a, a model in your head that all you have to do is the same process you know, you have to do. It's the same process. Be, be on the present moment. Just be on the present moment. That, that's the good yeah, part when you achieve too. something. Yeah, that, Vic, our producers pulled up some of the video of the, uh, the Japanese uh, championship and world championship in 2017. Yeah. So uh, the, now, just briefly going back to the Queen's Plate before we watch some of this. Uh, what uh, what was it? Uh, you you got a chance to meet the queen, and we saw that picture of, of uh, you with the queen. Did, did what did she say to you in, in the waiter circle? Uh, we uh, first was you know I tell you something funny. <laughs> first, uh, <laughs> the protocol the protocol is only give your hands to the queen if she shake the hands right. Man, I was right. right there like you know a dog looking the meat like you know <laughs> when the owner is going to give the meat. <laughs> For him, for him to go there, boom. And I was with her hands. I was watching her hands, you know. Oh, when she put the hands up to hold my hand, shake hands with me. And it's like I want to, I didn't know if I shake her hands or I jump. Yeah, she's shaking my hands. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then we talk, we talk a little bit about... Um, about the horse, you know, it was a very hot day and she was very, very impressed. The horse who won uh, uh, in the lead. She said, wow, with this heat and this horse went all the way. And um, I said, yeah, this is his style. That's the way he liked to run. And But the good news is uh, that he was running very relaxed. And you know what? She knows. She said, you know what? I saw his body language, you know, I saw that he was relaxed and he'll be tough. Like she really engaged in the conversation about horses. She loved horses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's had some horses. Very, very big racing fan. So it's very cool. Yeah, oh, well, she's big uh, time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We saw a little bit, a uh, little bit about the uh, the uh, the uh, 
big race with the uh, um, the all, World All Star Jockey Challenge, facing some of the world's best. But before before that, there were I want to. So you had some uh, more big races. It was 2017, and uh, Buller's Alley, a 42 to one shot in the Canadian International. This is one of the biggest turf events in North America. You know, one, one of the biggest races in the country. And uh, did you have any idea heading into the race that, that Buller's Alley had that talent to win to win a race like that? No, I have no clue. I saw him the day before. Man, this horse was looking so good. Like I saw him in the mar in the barn. I went to see him. He looked amazing. And 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 give me, you know, when you're riding a long shot, you trying to. I, I I tell you some secret about jockeys, right? This is about secret that uh, I didn't mention this to you, but uh, to, uh, to not to you, but to many people. But we the secret is that when you ride a long sh a shot, what you do, you what you're trying to do is trying to pick something you feel very positive. And uh, and I went there. Um, in the barn and he was looking so shiny and beautiful he relaxed he was happy and i said you know what we have a shot and i know the the secret is sometime we even look in the roof of the horse you know uh like a horse with the roof very small your roof and running in the on the turf is not so good but we ride a long shot and we see the foot is a big foot like that and then you mm -hmm. you you try thinking positive you know what the horse have a big foot uh, maybe he will handle the track uh, better than another horse this day. You, you try to pick something positive about the horse or, you know, that his feet, he's looking better than another horse's or, or he have a long stride, you know, and you're going to get along with him. And he's going to run relax for you. Something that you're trying to get positive and the positive about the horse that he was looking amazing. And the day he run, uh, and, and the track was soft, the track, very windy. Uh, and he was running on that turf like the turf was a, a hard, hard, hard ground, you know. And he ran brilliant. And he ran, ran brilliant. And he ended up winning for like by many, many lengths. Well, you can see him pulling ahead in the stretch here. It's just ridiculously strong finish. Yeah, and I have to keep alerting him because I'll be honest, I like could not hear anything. You know, like a normal race, you can hear another another jocks. I could not hear anything because it was so windy. It was very, very windy day that day. Well, that that was very impressive. But so now you, uh, you know, it, it, it just seems to be like here's you're you're winding down your career, but your career is getting, I mean, better and better and better so after bullers alley in 2017 and 2018 another spectacular year 230 37 wins at woodbine that shattered the old record of 221 by, by 16. and then the final year uh, at woodbine your 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 swan song season uh when after you announced your retirement uh you rode a horse named el tormenta in the one million dollar rico woodbine mile it's a for another 44 to one shot you're loving these 40 to one, 40 something. To <laughs> you know, one they don't know the odds, and... man. You need to believe on them, you know? <laughs> so tell us about, tell us about El Tormenta. And again, it, it's, uh, is this a horse that you had uh, some kind of notion that an inkling that this was going to happen? You know, he, he was a horse also same again. He didn't show much on, on his uh, racing records. But he always gets in trouble in the race, you know. Once in the beginning he was running off, and then he started getting in trouble. And always I see some talent on that horse. And I was very, very happy when my agent told me, "Because you're going to ride El Tormenta." I said, "This horse have a shot because this horse, he 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 having uh, not having such uh, too, too many good trips. And all I have to do is trying to give him a great trip. I think he's going to run really, really good. And again." He was traveling relaxed behind and uh, and he ran brilliant. Yes, another, another 40. What a, what a way to uh, ride off into the sunset, too, with with a, on a million yeah. dollar race. And the, the that was by, my last shot. Mile. Right. So now, um, yeah. so during those last four years of your career, you had a, a, a win percentage of 27 percent. Uh, 61 percent of the horses you rode finished in the top three. 
So I, I guess if I bet Eureka to show every race, I was going to make myself a lot of money over the season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it's, I, I was very blessed to ride a lot of good horses um, in, the, in the last four years. Um, and I have a very, uh, a very deep connection with the horses. Uh, uh, it was very hard for me to walk away from all this success, you know, but uh, uh, helping people for me means a lot. Uh, I've been working with some people uh, already and, um, and, uh, and some days I feel like I win a Queen's Plate, you know, because when, uh, when they can see the light in their life, uh, and uh, that is like winning a Queen's Plate. Yeah, tell us about uh, your your now your new career, your second career uh, as a as a as a coach. What what exactly? What are you out there trying to help these people achieve? Um, I work with a, a lot of different things. Uh, the The main thing is uh, the people I work with uh, get them to uh, trying uh, for them to understand that uh, they have to be their own best friend. You know. It's only one person need to take care of you is yourself. You know, the rest will come. Uh, that's what the first mindset that, and being connected with nature, meditation, uh, and ask powerful question. You know, I try to listen, more listen the the person and see really what that person is saying and uh, and trying to pitch the right, the right, uh, the right question for them, for them to know themselves. You know, uh, it's unbelievable we are human beings. We all have the little kid inside ourselves, you know, that one year, uh, zero to seven years old. And uh, it's like a, prog a program. And if you don't have the right program there to help you out in life, uh, and you're going to be struggling the same, uh, you're going to be in the same path all the time, you know. And that's what I try. I try to listen, hear, see where the beliefs coming from about themselves, you know, uh, tr trying to be curious about and ask the right question for them to come to the haha -ha moment for them to learn about themselves. Reaching that aha. Uh -huh. So yeah. now in addition, in, in the, how, if somebody wants to you, uh, have uh, Eureka Rosa da Silva a, as a coach, well, how would they, how would they uh, get a hold of you? Uh, they can go to my website, mindcoach.ca and send me a link. Um, you know, I work with, I, uh, my niche is uh, athletes and executive uh, because they have a very high pressure job. And I, uh, I use the same, um, um, uh, I have a formula program that I did for myself for many years uh, and I pass to them. But of course, every single person is different, right? Every, 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 every single individual is different, but uh, um, I try to feed them on the program and, uh, and there we go where they can hold their focus. Now, another thing I want to touch on before we, before we wrap up is, is I know you've, you've, you've always had a real special relationship with the horses you've rode. You, 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 your connection to horses is amazing. And I know that you're a big supporter of the long run program as well. And tell us about the, that connection. Long term um, program and, 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 and subsequently hope as well. And, the horses, the horse programs. Thanks for mentioning that, you know, um, another day I went to the long run and I'll never stop support long run. You know, I think horse deserve after uh, they retired, uh, like people, they deserve a good life, you know, and long run does a great job because they bring the horse and uh, after they finish race and you bring them, some horse take two months, three months, maybe four months, to settle their mind. Once they settle, they turn to a pet, you know? <clears throat> they could be a riding horse. They still can do something else, but not racing, but he, they still can do something else. And the ones ca can't do anything else because they have uh, breaking bones, um, that is a, th th then they'll keep the horse there. But most of the horse, they bring, they set the horse, and then they donate them uh, to another farm. It's not only they donate them, after that, they go visit the horse. If everything is okay with the horse, they check in on them. They do a great, great job. Like Vicky Papas, she's uh, she, 
uh, is a, uh, she's amazing, amazing hard person. And she, all the time there, uh, they do amazing job. The farm is beautiful. It's a beautiful farm. You know, I, I recommend, you know, after the, uh, this lockdown, like people want to see beautiful horses, beautiful farm, great energy. I really recommend you go visit Long Run. The uh, the uh, there was a you know the, 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 these those animals are just so beautiful. But you do really seem that I don't know. It, it seemed to me that you had a connection with those horses that a lot of other people, a lot of other riders haven't had. What kind of like and, and you developed this early and you could see it early in your in your career, early in your life. And, and uh, you know what was that spark? Where did you see that spark? Uh, it's a question that come to my mind. I think it's compassion, you know, animal, um, they don't judge you, you know? And um, I was, uh, I was very small little kids, you know, I didn't judge about my, like, very early in life, uh, you know, uh, by my father, right? My mom worked like a horse, like my, my mom, oh, sh her life was, oh, she has no time to judge you no know, because she worked like a horse, the poor thing. Uh, you know, and but my father always around there judging. And then I went to school. Uh, I didn't judge because I was the, always I was the small kid in every school I went. That's how small I was. And I don't complain eh? because I did. You know, I, I'm a jockey. <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, it's always being judged and, and being judging my own self. You know, I learned very well to do that long time ago to judge my own self, you know. You are ugly guy, you are no good, you are this, you are that, because you learn, you program that. But horse, when I was with horse, was different. Horse, I think we just saw the, that video, that lady, that lady was, uh, was a bay horse. She was touching the horse head and the horse just sh uh, showing the compassion and love to her back, you know, mirroring that to her, right? And this was horse mirrored to me, you know, mirroring love, mirror compassion. Uh, when I used to live in the barn, uh, Zeli Medeiros barn, and every night I was happy, I was hugging the horse, and the hug was, he was like, they rest their head on my back, you know, and uh, man, it was so much love. And I think that what is, is, uh, is the compassion, the love, no judgment. Well, and that's what uh, that's what I really see from you today, Eureka, is, is uh, love and no judgment. And, uh, you know, you're a, you're a person who I'm, I'm honored to be friends with and, and, and to know you. Bruce and Eureka, I want to I want to uh, say thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, now, Eureka, you had the uh, this one famous saying that we used to uh, uh, hear every time you want to race and when you hop off your horse. And of course, that was good luck to everyone. <laughs> all right and good luck to you my friend thank you for being on joe tilly sports thank you uh, thank you for having we me got a, here we've got a we've got a four you, you know I'm, I'm, we're honored we're pleased thank you so much and thank you bruce uh, uh by the way as a guest on, on joe tilly sports we have a, a foursome from club link for you and uh remember that we're all in this together happy new year guys happy new year Promotional consideration provided by Clublink. Clublink. One membership, more golf. Slow play. It's a slippery slope. First you go looking for that lost ball, and then everything goes sideways. There are a lot of golfers on the course. Make certain of your point of entry, look quickly, and move on. Remember, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Find anything, Bob? Not yet. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, reuniting families. The only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life. Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. 
1-855-787-2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. COSA, Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, providing a united voice for harness horse people racing at Ontario tracks. Check out your benefits today at cosaonline.com. Also, check out COSA TV on Facebook and YouTube for all the latest harness news and live action updates. Live racing year-round and go to freescratch.ca for your chance to win a new fabulous prize every day with COSA. And some final sports notes. Uh, Team Canada had to settle for silver at the World Junior Hockey Championships, as we all know. Spencer Knight with a phenomenal 35. Uh, win every year. It wouldn't be fair, would it? Now, the Yanks probably shouldn't uh, put the garbage can on the uh, Canadian logo in the photo op at the end of that game, but what are you going to do with their kids? By the way, the top defenseman at the World Juniors, Finland's Toppy Niemela, who is a lease prospect. Well, training camps in the NHL are fully underway. The NHL season is coming up. The Leafs are trying to uh, work out their new line combinations. Austin Matthews is centering a line with Mitch Marner and Joe Thornton. Interesting to see what kind of chemistry the gray beard Jumbo Joe, Jumbo Joe might find with the young playmakers. Hey, I'm open to it. Why not? Let's see what happens. Uh, by the way, the season opens Wednesday, January 13th against the Habs. The Leafs are favored to win the division, whatever corporate sellout name they're calling it right now. I believe they will. There's some triple headers in there. They have some back-to-back-to-backs. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun to see a bunch of Canadian teams playing against each other, developing some really intense rivalries. While the Raptors have stumbled badly out of the gate, many of us suspected they might not challenge for the title. But, hey, surely they have been better. they they got to be better than they've shown so far with the 1-6 and six lead. Blown leads every game. Freddie Van Vliet has been fine. Kyle Lowry, okay. But what's up with Pascal Siakam? Spicy P has been more like a spicy D for his effort so far. OG Ananobi, more like OMG. Let's start earning that $18 million a season. Aaron Baines, put some shrimp on the bobby. And uh, you guys, get your act together and learn how to hold a bloody lead. Buffalo Bills wrapped up an awesome regular season, crushing the rival Dolphins, knocking the fish out of the playoffs, sewing up the number two seed in the AFC. The Bills will beat everybody, folks, but the Chiefs this year. The Browns made it to the dance for the first time in 18 years. Get another crack at the Steelers. They could pull it off. The Steelers have dropped four of their last five. Washington won the turtle race. The NFC East, they get those Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. Brady should pick them apart in the wild card game. The Bills host the Colts, take Buffalo handily. Seattle is home to the Rams. I like the Seahawks. Baltimore's at Tennessee. Tennessee wins big. Chicago will get blasted in New Orleans. I still like a Chiefs Saints Super Bowl with the Chiefs making it back to back title. A reminder to subscribe to Joe Tilly Sports on YouTube. You don't want to miss the latest news. Uh, we close with a look at the folks who make this show possible. Now, these are all friends, they're trusted business associates, and all around. Great folks. I uh, highly recommend all of them. Once again, we want to thank you, Rico and Bruce. The book is called Riding for Freedom. Get it today. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. The Joe Tilly Show is available on the Barn Burner Network on Zingo TV. Download both the Barn Burner and Zingo TV apps from their respective iOS and Android app stores. Both apps are free. Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Fire TV Sticks, Roku, and Roku Sticks. Get Aldo at REMAX Crossroads. Do you want to buy or sell a home? Could 31 years of real estate experience help you? Why not speak to an amazing team that loves to overpromise and overdeliver? Call 416 Get Aldo or visit www.getaldo.com to find out what next level real estate looks like. RS Demolition and Excavation has extensive experience with complete teardowns and interior strip-outs. Looking to build a custom home? RS Excavating Services has the experience you need to build in established neighborhoods. For the highest level of quality and cost-efficient results, we provide innovative demolition solutions completed on time and on budget while ensuring our number one priority, safety. 
Call 647-852-3006 for an estimate or visit rsdemolition.ca. Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. And let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family in your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did. 905-686-5678. The Painting Pros. Want to freshen up a single room, change the appearance of your entire home, update the look of an older property, or completely transform your building? Go with the pros. Our fully insured team is skilled in surface preparation, selection of the proper finishes, as well as the application of the selected paint coatings. The perfect finish for your home or business. Call the Painting Pros, 289-830-2331, or... Visit thepaintingpros.ca.